G'day guys, Derek Best, Beacon Fight for Life. Today, I've got the pleasure of interviewing Marika, who's a, she's a studying, she's a psycho, practicing psychologist um, and has been for three years and also, but she's been in the mental health space for 20 years. What I'm really excited about, I mean, it's, it's a terrible thing to probably be really excited about, but Marika's got her own personal experience with suicide and she's actually a survivor. Um, first of all, Marika, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. And um, thank you for sharing the story about to share with me about being a survivor. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, and I said it before, like when you said survivor, I don't entirely look at myself as a survivor. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm lucky I'm here today, so I do. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure I, people out there want to hear that because you, you find it difficult to remember the story. Yeah, it's been, I mean, the journey has been quite a while. And when you asked and I thought like, oh, I have to look back at the times, the dark times that I really felt like I can't be here. I don't want to be here. I need to really, I, I need to leave this world because mm. I can't be a participant member of it. Wow. And there's been a couple of occasions that I've had that. So it's not only one time. There's mm. definitely multiple times of periods of my life that's been quite heavy and really quite deep and and I'm looking back on them as one of my most profound times that mm. biggest change happened because mm. something needed to give like if yeah. you're so I don't how long ago are we talking I think because it's a progression, it's a journey where you're on, but really seriously, I'm looking, I'm going to give my age here, I'm 45, by the way, <laughs> it's about definitely from age 20, mm. and I think in between age 20 and 30, there's been a couple of times that I had these periods of time that I really, really struggled, Yeah. big time, yeah, yeah, and, um, it was struggles in multiple levels, functioning, having a job, managing, having relationships, mm. very much different uh, times that I thought like, I don't know how I can manage all of this and I don't know and that I feel really deep and low and something wrong with me. So you were just doing life from yeah. what you've explained and you felt overwhelmed. Absolutely. You felt overwhelmed from everything that was going on and you thought, okay, I'd rather not be here, but more intensely than that. Yeah, there's been times that I, I'm looking back on it and I'm going to say, I'm, I'm a bit of a joker about it. I'm like, but mm. luckily I wasn't too smart about it. <laughs> 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 so I'm quite happy to sit here now yeah. and thinking back like, wow, I'm, I'm glad that it wasn't. It wasn't too, you know, that I wasn't too smart about it and that it actually didn't happen. I absolutely, yeah, I'm, I'm sitting in a, in a much different space right now and it's, yeah. So that's my next question. What do you think was the turning point? What do you think was we went from being very dark and suicidal to, I, saw, I guess it was a gradual thing. It wasn't something just, I woke up and went, I feel better. Or no. Was, or was it? I didn't feel better, but I made a different choice. Okay. It felt like I don't want to do this and keep on doing life if the way how I'm doing, surely this cannot be the way. Mm. And I really realized that it's, if, that it's going to be from coming from me, however people are around me, I will need to make that decision whether I want to be how I want to be in life. And I think, and I say it indeed, how I want to be in life. I think something shifted in me in a moment of time that I thought like, nah, I'm not gonna go this pathway again. Mm. And I, I think I just took some of my power back mm -hmm. into however it takes, I'm gonna live the life. I am actually a person that can, I can make my choices and freedom of how I want to live my life. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm going to do my best to get to that. So do you think, you know, you were let it, allowing, again, we haven't really spoken about this in depth, but you were allowing the outside outside or the external to control your thoughts, and then you thought, wait a minute, I'm going to control how I think. It was definitely a switch from feel that I was lived by, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like the world, and I just, I was a participant in it but I don't think sometimes I sometimes I say to clients I want you to stop being in this you know behind the steering wheel of your own vehicle Mm. and I don't think I felt that way and I very much feel that way right where I'm now Mm -hmm. but I I didn't see it that way I did but something shifted in my but I am actually I can make decisions and choices and I I think the shift went from more focusing on me and what a lot of people would feel more selfish and that's my journey for mm-hmm. other people there might be other journeys needed yep. to make shift do you think um, suicide suicide affects others or can make others behave differently if you mean that it, if it happens around you or family mm. members mm. Yeah, it definitely can it can bring up a lot of emotions, that's for sure. Mm. Um, but it definitely also can, while you're not wanting it, it can trigger a kind of almost... And it's not a bad thing. I want to make it very clear. It's not a bad thing to really think about, I don't want to be here in this life anymore. Mm actually saying that out loud and be really honest with that is what can make the decision and the choice of making differences mm. and reaching out for help you say it could be because you're saying it out loud you can hear it and you think yeah but it can be really kind of like you can i, I want to help and prevent that people get swept away by it mm. it's okay and it's normal to have these feelings and these experiences and that's why i'm also talking today about it Mm. it really is we it's almost un unrealistic to expect that at some point of life you don't go and have some of the deeper darker moments of your life Mm -hmm. um i think we're all honest you know at some point in our life we've had even if it's a fleeting thought of you know i'd rather be dead than face this or put up with this and then some people just get on with it, get busy with solutions, and then some people obsess over it. It's the people that obsess over it that I guess that would be your typical client because now that you, you've been practicing psychology, who would be your typical client? I mean, you're practicing out of Kalamunda and Fremantle in Western Australia. Who, who, would you, who would be your typical client? Typical client that is lots of stuff going on in their lives, mm. internally and externally anxiety and depression they fluctuate between all kind of emotional like kind of state we're living in a society where it's very much do 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 and so a lot of people do come to me where they say where they either feel shut down numb or checked out but also at some other moments they're feeling really like agitated anxiety panic and often that goes hand in hand um yeah a lot of people blame social media what's your stance on that do you think that's got something to do with it i mean i I suppose social media is like fire it can it can keep you warm at night or it can burn your house down what what what's your feeling about social media it definitely can go both ways Mm -hmm. and maybe that's also where your thought processes are going are you drowning and swallowing more and what are you looking for and what are you feeling if you're going down in the misery pathway further 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 you're just going further down away the pathway that's how social media can really kind of suck you in Mm. um or it can really help you moving forward and feeling really that understood and and um valued and a kind of more normal as a normal being Mm -hmm. um so it can go both ways yeah do you think with your experience you know being around mental health working around this area for 20 years do you think the problem's getting better or worse 
I do think we're having quite a lot of mental health and a lot of loneliness and um, it's we're in a period of time where and I do think also still the aftermath of COVID and what a lot of people don't talk about but we I actually predicted during that time frame that mental health was going to have a flow on effect mm. continuously but that's not the only thing it's been I think rising and rising in kind of how we're living our lives and how society is done that um, doesn't support well-being general well-being not only mental health but general well-being mm. is quite can be quite tough I mean financial stresses alone can be so devastating for mm. people so you think people still feel alone I mean I know that's a big factor for to suicide people feeling alone mm. You think that people do feel alone? Absolutely. And you know what? Most people, actually a lot of people, feel the most lonely when in actually in the presence of other people. Because wow. we don't know how to connect. If we don't feel the connection truly with people, and if you don't, and, and that can may actually increase the sense of loneliness, um, that you're not feeling that you can feel that you're fitting in or that you can't see you know show yourself of how you are mm. all of that can really make you feel so lonely so even people in groups like there could be a group of six people and one of those people in there could be feeling disjointed or disconnected or probably most likely how would you how would you pick up on those signs just for the for people to you know maybe be more aware because this is something i'm really interested in is for people to be understand that you know understand what's going on around them because sometimes people can be too busy being busy yeah and you might be in a group of 10 people six people four people or two people and someone's feeling isolated lonely disconnected what sort of signs should you look for there can be all different signs because people can be really good or actually don't know that they're really good at hiding their mm. true feelings and their emotions so that and that could be part of it mm. But it could be that someone is more retreating and withdrawing and kind of not really participating and excluding themselves. Mm -hmm. But it also can be the person that is joking a lot and is very, you know, seem to be very funny and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, they do talk about comedians that they can be the most depressed people. Yeah. Kind of goes into normal life as well. Wow. Does that mean, is that because people are introverted, extroverted or is that separate? It's separate. It's just a way of where they're no, some people don't don't know how to. I guess and and I think sometimes it's more difficult for men actually to really show how mm. they're doing, um, so they can hide it behind, you know. And as long as I keep on going and being, um, it's a way of of of, of coping. It yeah. can be a way of coping. You touch on men. I mean, again, we spoke about this before we started filming, but you get a sense of satisfaction dealing with men's groups. Yeah. Do you want to go into that a little bit more? Yeah. Um, I used to run men's groups, and I have such a privileged and honoured experience with that. I feel mm. that something magical happens in those groups because a lot of men feel really difficult to connect with other men. Mm. Um, in a, I'd say, supportive way. And you mentioned before blaming and everything. That's mm. kind of like, once you start blaming anyone or everywhere, that's not really helpful. Mm. Also not blaming yourself, but also not blaming others. That's when you get the stuckness. But in those groups, it can be really... I can see you thinking. But <laughs> no, no, well, I'm thinking my next question because <laughs> she said something interesting. Go on. <laughs> But those groups, what I love about it is, is that I'm just a facilitator and it brings out what people just actually want to share and create that safe environment that they feel definitely less alone mm. and, and how, and to come up with solutions and to think about things. And, and yeah, so I, um, I'm very passionate about running those groups and doing those groups so if if there's men in the Kalamunda Fremantle area or anywhere in Western Australia how would they get hold of you or 
for a men's group if they want to participate in a men's group how would they get hold of you through Kashmir Psychology. So if they reach out to Kashmir Psychology and, and saying, look, I'm interested in, in I actually want to join groups, because it's also um, financially cheaper to actually be a participant of a group. It's just, it for mm. me, it just makes more sense. So it's more user-friendly because you can get, you, you make it cheaper because you've got a group of people. And it's community-based. It's not only individual. I think mm. we, we're doing so much in individual ways as well. So if anyone wants to connect and reach out and feel like, yeah, I feel, you know, comfortable enough to have these, that we just, that, and that's why I want to do this, be easy and normal. This is okay to talk about it. Again, I haven't asked you this question, so I don't know the answer. But is that if they've got a mental health plan? Does that would, is that adequate for them to join in the group? Potentially, I will have to look it up. But I would say there is there is up to Medicare has some groups that will will support that, and also individual sessions, and you can reach both. Mm. You can do both. Um, it's not excluded. Um, but there's other ways that you can do, and, and, and like I said. So Kashmir Psychology, um, if you can look that up, I'll put that in the post that I'm, when I post this. Um, I had a sense of relief when you said to me, you know, again, going back to the beginning where we spoke about you being a survivor, and you said, wow, I, I can't really remember. I have to think about that. For the people out here watching, you know, that may be feeling alone, maybe feeling disconnected, maybe feeling like there's no other way out other than suicide. What can you tell them as a, being a survivor that would maybe help them or give them op hope or opportunity? It's definitely a period of time. I would call it a deep kind of going back into yourself. And if you take that opportunity and actually and, and, and do that, do, reach out. Definitely don't do it by yourself. Mm. But it's such an... I see that every time, so it's it's a bit of a strange when people come to me and I say I get actually excited because you're sharing this and this is where really the true differences can happen, mm. the major changes happening and that you will start doing things in there because you're being forced basically, your 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 mind, your body, your your being is telling you this is not the way, mm. so it's. And when you listen to that and actually go and do and, and look at it, okay, what is it that will actually fulfill me and reach out, then you start that journey. And I can tell you from sitting here, it's like, I am grateful, and it sounds really strange to say, but I'm grateful that I've had every time that I, and I still see it when there's some periods that I just like, like there's some crap going on and, and stuff. And I think, okay, this is telling me something. Mm something is not right for me and it's just yeah i'm grateful for that mm -hmm. there's really opportunities it and you definitely it's a period of time to be curious yeah and ask better questions of yourself yeah or usually you need when you are <laughs> and i i fully admit without the people that i had around me the support that i had they definitely help you because when you're in that dark pit you're quite tunnel visioned and you don't it's like you don't see your way out and it's really when you actually and and that's why i said slow movement reaching out to people that actually will hold on and and actually help you with asking some different questions so that you get unstuck mm -hmm. out of that it depends on how deep stuck you are <laughs> I'd rather have people coming early. <laughs> yeah. Do you get a sense of achievement out of the work you do? Yeah, it is. It's very fulfilling and rewarding when I always try to find and say, I want to, I want to work on more joy and pleasure in your life. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's such a rewarding way, even though individual, when they come and come with things that I never imagined that, that, for them works for them and i find that awesome because that is the journey the the, the surprises as well what they find it's yeah. not what what i would think will work for them um but individual work is quite like it feels there's so much mental health out there that needs support it feels quite like almost i was gonna say the tap is running and it's like i can't keep up we can't we as therapists we can't keep up as fast mm. as what these things are happening and 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 needed mm. 
Um, so, yeah. Well, thank you, Marika, and thank you for the work that you do. Um, it takes the, the people like you to make the world go around, so and it makes the world a better place. So thank yeah. you for what you do. Um, thank you. On that note, I'm Derek Best, and uh, make sure you take the time to smile today. Thank you. <laughs>